Tired of getting whooped up on by those 97 guys? Well, stick around, because today on Dead Eye, we're going to head down to the range and cover some double barrel tips. fun one today shotgunning with the double barrel I really feel like no matter where you're at in your game whether you're just starting or you've been here since the start of cowboy shooting the shotgun portion of the stage is where you can shave the most time all right guys well, let's jump right in first we gotta start off with how we're gonna get our first two shells in fast and efficiently so almost every time no matter where you're coming from you're almost always gonna be shells in your hand as you're coming to your shotgun even if you're standing right over it, whatever you're transitioning to, you'll have your shells in your hand before the chambers get up. So, first off, how do we grip them? Now, some people like to grip over the top. I like to grip them from the side. And by doing that, I've got my thumb on the back side, my ring finger on the, I guess that's your ring finger, middle finger, on the front side, and my pointer finger over the top of them. Now, that helps me control the shells effectively. Um, that's probably the most popular way to do it, but it doesn't mean if you like to go over the top, you can do it that way too. I just feel like they can get away from you a little easier here. So this is my method to controlling the shells. And my goal isn't always to keep them perfectly spaced apart, just that they're both straight. Because most of the time with the way your shotgun is funneled with whoever did the action job on it, they're gonna allow you a little bit of leeway there. So don't worry about keeping them perfectly spaced apart just that they're both parallel to each other. That's my goal. So we got our shells in our hand. And so we come in, we want to roll this up and get those chambers stopped. So how I'm going to do that is, I'm going to have a focal point right there on the trigger. That way I can cleanly hit that every time. And I'm going to roll that stock up to my shoulder and pull it right in. If you've noticed, I left the barrels pretty low. And I do this because I don't want these barrels continuing to move up while I'm trying to put the shells in. That's going to lead you into problems of flipping the shells out or hitting your chambers wrong and such. So I like to make sure my chambers are stopped. So to do that, whenever I pick my shotgun up, I'm picking it up and I'm leaving the barrels down. I'm thinking about leaving the barrels down. And I'm still going to bring the shotgun up almost to a cheek weld. My chain, my, of course my shells are already in my hand and as soon as those barrels are stopped then I'm coming in. This is one of the number one problems I see with people loading their shotgun for the first two, first two shells. When they come in the chambers are still coming up while their hands are coming down into them and you're trying to thread a needle while holding it out in front of you and moving the needle and the thread at the same time. It's better to have one braced and only have one object moving into the other. So my goal is to get the shotgun up, chamber stopped. That way I have a position I can focus on and put the shells in it. Now everybody's got a different focal point. Now from there I talked about focusing on the trigger to get it up. But after that, after I've already got my hand on the shotgun, my next focal point is now the right chamber. Now for me it's the right chamber. You might like it dead in the center, right here where the your extractor's at or something, or maybe above it. For me, I'm actually looking at the top right chamber. And that's just that's just what works for me. So my focal point is that top right chamber and I'm going to bring my shells into it on top of the chamber so I'm going to lay them there. A lot of people will try to come in, even if they're not pushing them straight in, they're kind of coming in at an angle and just letting them fall in that way. I actually stop mine on the chambers 
right here. And I might even over exaggerate and roll them over a little bit and then actually roll them in. That's just something I do. Um, also, where the shells hit on the chambers matter for me. I see a lot of people that come up real fast and they'll hit the shells real low in the chambers. And then you'll get the shells to split out. Like that. So I actually look at the top part of the chamber, right side, so that the mid bottom side of the shell hits up high. And then you just roll them right in. All right, guys, so we've rolled the shotgun up, stopped the chambers, shells are in our hands like we like them. We're going to set the shells on the chambers. We've rolled them in. We've snapped to the target. One, two. Now we've got to get them out. This is definitely the part of the double barrel, which everybody has their own methods for. But for me, I feel like the best way to increase your speed with the double is by being more efficient with this hand. So we've got to get this hand off the shotgun, back to the shells, and more shells up quickly and efficiently. So how I do that is by con combining breaking the shotgun and shucking the shotgun at the same time. How I do that is, so we've shot one, we've shot two. I'm going to drop that stock just under my shoulder. I'm not going to pitch it out. I'm not going to come up to the side or come up with it or anything real high. Or I'm not even going to reach out with my hand. A lot of people will actually come off the stock, break it this way, and then shut and re-grab the stock. For me, I'm going to drop the stock under my shoulder, or yeah, drop the stock under my shoulder, under my armpit, and push it straight back. By doing this, I'm moving this thumb closer to that top lever. See, I can't reach it, shooting position right here. But as soon as I start to go into the armpit, it moves closer and closer to my thumb, and then it just pushes right into it and breaks. I keep pushing this back into the shoulders so it comes back like this and my hand starts to roll off and then down to the belt. So it's one fluid motion, one, two, back here. Now we're coming up with the shells at the same time as we're bringing the shotgun up. My eyes are focusing back in on the chambers and then one, two more and then repeat. However many you want to go. So one thing that I found that has really helped to increase my speed on this is by tracking my chambers. So throughout all this, something I haven't talked about a lot is actually focusing on your chambers, seeing them. It's kind of like hearing your wife and listening to your wife. <laughs> you want to not just look at the chambers, you want to see them. You want to see that spot. Let them focus in. Let the lines get sharp. So they're here. Your focus is now here. Now your eyes have to refocus out to your bead. So once we come back and we go to shuck, most people will actually keep their eyes on their target and then bring their eyes back to their shotgun. Well, the problem with that is you've, it takes a little extra time for your eyes to focus and most of the time you don't let your eyes actually focus. So what I do is we put one, two 
I'm going to track those chambers right here. There's no reason to be looking at my targets right now. I hit them. I know I hit them. I made sure I hit them. So here, and we're coming back up, and I'm going to track those chambers. I'm out of shells. <laughs> All right, got my shells back. So we're here. This is where I'm looking. This is where I'm focusing. Now I'm focusing my bead. Now chambers. Bead. Chambers. Bead. Back and forth, back and forth. Actually think about focusing on your chambers, track them, back out to your bead. And that's going to eliminate a lot of missing the chambers each time. That's how you can hit them quickly and efficiently each time. So, now I don't see this. That's just a blur. But from my bead, looking back down, I'm letting my eyes start pull their focus back in before now. So if I was looking at where I want them to be and it comes right into my view, now my eyes are focusing actually out there to up here. But I'm going to get them a head start. One, two, I'm going to track. I'm going to bring that focus in into this area and not out at this area. So that's going to help me to get my eyes to focus on my chambers faster. All right, let's shoot some. Got some shells to burn here. Hopefully they shut. They're kind of my throwouts out of a match. But let's do a match speed one. Start hands on hat. I feel like that's a more difficult position to start than like hands at your side or even on your shotgun or anything. So from here. Those are factories. <laughs> let's run into our shotgun. Ah, my target went down. Now guys, whenever I'm snapping that up, I'm not trying to snap and hit that target really quick. That's just a, a byproduct of practice. And I'm not trying to get quick splits. That's also just practice and, you know, eye focus speed. So I hear a lot of people talk about their split times and their double barrels and their shotgunning. And uh, I'll be honest with you, that should be the least of your worries. I would just worry about hitting your targets, getting good solid hits. And by doing that, your focus can shift into reloading your shotgun or moving into your next firearm rather than looking back up at your targets, wondering if you hit them or not. So take that little extra time, hit those targets so you can shift your focus into what needs to happen next. That missed one is a perfect example of why I like to roll these shells lay them and roll them in. If you noticed, I rolled twice. If I would have came in stabbed, I probably most likely would have threw one of those. They wouldn't have flying out of my hand. I laid up there, I laid up wrong. I started, went, oh crap. Took them back out, rolled them in. Don't really cost you much time. So yeah, guys, um, I feel like that's a solid overview of it. Um, like I said, um, one of the major things for me is my eyes focusing, chambers, back out to my bead, back to my chambers. Think about that in your practicing. And then uh, from there it's the efficiency of getting this hand from your forearm to your belt quickly. And we do that by using efficiency by breaking and shucking at the same time. So you may not shoot this exact method. You may have other reasons why you can't shoot this exact method, but maybe you can take some of those points and apply them to your method. Alright guys, that's all I got for you today. So let's head back to the loading room and finish this thing up. Alright guys, so we just came back in and I loaded up some of that video before, you know, finishing off this scene here. And, um, well, I, kinda, I think I missed a uh, key point. And that key point is uh, timing. Now what I mean by that is I'm talking about the timing of each and every operation that happens and it's very critical to everything in your cowboy game um, but particularly here in the shotgun we're talking about when the barrels stop putting the shells on them and rolling them in or breaking and checking at the same time a lot of people make those look like two separate operations or they're trying to actually have to do them at the same time and that's where they run into problems at so while doing these operations in order, you definitely want to practice each step specifically, but definitely make sure to think about your timing and tighten your timing up. Like the second that shotgun stops, those shells are hitting that chamber. Um, the second that last shot's fired, 
you're already pushing or driving that form into your shoulder and breaking it as you go so it just looks like one motion um i mean it takes a little bit to get there it definitely takes time it takes practice but you know that's something that we didn't really cover out there on the range i thought i'd mention and it's hard to see that obviously when you're shooting fast it's hard to see those individual operations but it's something that you definitely need to be mentioned sometimes when you're looking at slow mos not just how to move but looking at the timing like when the barrels stop when the shells are laid on them um as soon as the shot's made what's what's happening the break the shuck when the hand is rolling off so it looks like in a lot of them like the hand just as soon as you break the hand just comes right off and that's just something i have to express how it feels to shoot um this shotgun in that way and it feels like i'm really driving that form in my shoulder but that's that's timing so it's just rolling off at the right time so that the momentum of the shotgun's coming back, this arm's just letting it kind of float. And then as the shells are being shucked, the hand's coming down, this is this right hand, your strong hand hanging onto your shotgun, or if you're left hand, your left hand, is just driving that shotgun forward back into place so that you could, you know, make it stop earlier to focus on them. And once again, that's also timing. How fast your eyes actually focus in. You're not letting your your hand speed dictate how fast you get to the chambers it's your eye speed you know you want to you know have those hands timed to how fast it takes your eyes to focus in on those chambers so you're not trying to get there quick and get it up and let them just focus it's kind of just all in one as it's focusing your hands coming up and then as soon as they go into focus they're going in it's timing more so than it is just straight hand speed so uh, last time we talked about that was uh, in our double tap video and like I said, we're going to have a video on that in the future, uh, fully separate on, you know, how that relates to our game. So I just thought I'd mention, mention that, uh, something I missed there while I was out in the range. Other than that, guys, let me know what you think. Um, that was pretty just basic coverage. There's obviously a lot of other scenarios we can cover and transitions and movement and all that kind of stuff. And we're definitely going to get to those. So uh, keep up the suggestions. That was definitely a um, very popular suggested uh, comment in my message box was the shotgunning tips so yeah if you have any suggestions kick them out there i already have a whole list of things to cover but um if i definitely see something popping up that's more popular i'll cover that first if i got time to so thanks for that guys also don't forget hell in the border is this weekend if you haven't signed up i think they're still going to let you guys sign up and i'm going to go this year first time out there so if you're out there say hi if you see me waving some cameras on the air and acting like a crazy wild man uh, don't worry, I'm, I'm okay. I'm not mentally ill. <laughs> um, I do got some new cameras down there. It's going to be fun to shoot with. So hope to get some good footage for you guys, uh, some actual match footage. Like always, guys, if you like the video, make sure you like and subscribe and all that good YouTube stuff. Basically, they we're going to help the YouTube algorithms push more cowboy action stuff out there for people to see. That's the idea behind it all. And I'd like to thank... All of you that have already liked and subscribed these, to these videos, I appreciate that very much. Speaking of which, I think we just passed 500 subscribers, which is supposed to be pretty good in the YouTube world after just a few months. So thanks for that. And I'll keep putting up the good content and hopefully it helps you guys out. So once again, thanks for watching. One thing to think about your training and whenever you're out there uh, shooting a stage, focus your eyes in your chambers, out to your bead, back to your chambers. Don't worry about those splits, get good hits. That's gonna help you with your shotgun speed. I think I just made it rhyme. Oh, it's so boring.